Let's start with a new topic that is air pollution from internal combustion engine. So we have already gone through how combustion takes place in spark ignition engine and in compression ignition engine. Now we must go through the other aspect that is emissions from this combustion engines. So before starting with emissions from internal combustion engine. We will quickly go through what is air pollution and what is history behind the realization of air pollution from mankind. So, in 1940s, air pollution was recognized as a problem in Los Angeles of California. Large population created large number of factories, power plants, automobile density. Smoke and other pollutants created smog conditions. Then after in 1950s, smog problem increased due to increase in population and automobile densities. Automobile recognized as major contributor to air pollution. By 1960s, emission standards began to be enforced in California. During next decades, emission standards adopted in whole of United States, Europe and Japan. By making engine fuel efficient, emissions per vehicle reduced by 95% during 1970s and 1980s and engines consumed less than half of the fuel. However, during this time, number of automobiles greatly increased with no overall decrease in fuel uses okay so this is history behind air pollution so as there is development industrial development as there is development in automobile sector the use of automobile and use of internal combustion engine also increases so it increases contribution to air pollution by automobile sector so we need to go through the emissions for, by automobiles which factors affect these emissions and how to control these emissions. Okay. Now emissions of pollutants from SI engines. Now before starting with emissions, let's go through the ideal combustion process in petrol engine. So it gives 2 C8 H18 plus 25O2 plus 25 into 3.76N2 gives 16 CO2 plus 18H2O plus 25 into 3.76N2 plus heat. So this is ideal reaction. There is very rare possibility that this reaction occurs inside the combustion chamber. But in ideal condition, your fuel contains carbon and hydrogen it must get converted into carbon dioxide and water vapor and your nitrogen from air must be unaffected. So this is ideal condition that is all carbon atoms will get converted into carbon dioxide and all hydrogen atoms will get converted into H2O and your nitrogen part of the air must remain unaffected. Okay, so this is most ideal condition which is which has very 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 layer probability to occur inside the engine. So apart from this, so ideally you must have carbon dioxide, water vapor and nitrogen in your exhaust system or into your uh, byproduct of combustion. But you can observe from SI engine, CO carbon monoxide is there, hydrocarbons are there and NOx also there. So what is the condition for formation of these pollutants which are undesirable gases from atmospheric point of view so co carbon monoxide so whenever there is insufficient oxygen in contact with carbon there will be formation of carbon monoxide instead of carbon dioxide if there is sufficient oxygen in contact with carbon then there will be formation of carbon dioxide but if there is insufficient oxygen then there will be formation of carbon monoxide so there are two reasons due to incomplete or insufficient, insufficient oxygen in carbon 
it leads to incomplete combustion it leads to formation of carbon dioxide and second thing that carbon dioxide is unstable at very high temperature so it disintegrates into carbon monoxide and oxygen so carbon monoxide if there is formation of carbon monoxide there are two reason first there will be insufficient oxygen and second there will be very high temperature which leads to dissociation of carbon dioxide second hydrocarbon again due to insufficient oxygen there is formation of hydrocarbon there are two reason of formation of hydrocarbon one there must be unburnt particle or there must be there must be incomplete or partial burning of fuel so unburnt fuel leads to the emission of hydrocarbon and second if there is inadequate oxygen it leads to the formation of hydrocarbon so next interesting thing in ideal process we assume that the nitrogen is unaffected during this combustion process so in in that you can observe this nitrogen is released same as it is so nitrogen must be unaffected according to our ideal combustion reaction but there is formation of nox so what is reason behind formation of nox now you can you can understand it with stability of nitrogen with respect to temperature now if you have nitrogen at atmospheric temperature then it remains unaffected so in atmospheric air there is presence of oxygen also and there is presence of nitrogen also but their nitrogen never reacts with oxygen at atmospheric condition so why there is formation of nox so as temperature of combustion chamber increases beyond 1100 degrees celsius this nitrogen becomes unstable and it reacts with the oxygen available with it so formation of nox is merely due to the higher higher temperature of combustion chamber so you can always observe nox in emission due to higher temperature inside the combustion chamber so we cannot separate nitrogen from the air taken into the cylinder and in the cylinder there will be presence of oxygen there will be presence of nitrogen and temperature of combustion chamber reaches beyond 1100 degree celsius so there will be formation of nox okay now our next part is emission of pollutants from ci engine so basically most of the emission components of ci engine are also same that is carbon monoxide hydrocarbon and nox so we are not going to discuss about this again next part is smoke carbon particles due to poor combustion of fuel black smoke increases with load while smoke due to liquid droplet of lubricating oil and fuel so this is another pollutant from ci engine the percentage of smoke from ci engine is more compared to si engine so in si engine the percentage of smoke is very negligible so you cannot observe black smoke from the exhaust pipe in si engine but there is possibility of smoke in ci engine then spms heavily produced on burning of diesel fuel as solid particle vapors of h2so4 then aldehydes more pronounced in diesel engines by burning of alcohol then so2 and h2s by burning of sulfur present in diesel so sulfur which is not desirable to be present in any fuel in internal combustion engine but if you are using diesel there is sulfur present as a impurity and the combustion of such fuel leads to formation of sulfur dioxide if there is excess oxygen and h2s if there is insufficient oxygen so that is so you can observe pollution from ci engine is more compared to pollution from si engine means undesirable gases in the after combustion in si engines are more compared to ci engine sorry in ci engine it is more compared to si engine 